Hey guys! So if you haven't already noticed by the title, this is going to be like a really base focused tutorial. I'm going to help you achieve that flawless finish skin, stop that patchiness happening, that oiliness seeping through, help your foundation last for as long as possible basically. So we're going to work on the base intensely. It's going to be an intensive today. <laughs> so we're going to start by priming. And so really the primer does depend on your type of skin if you're more oily like me you want a mattifying primer however if you're more dry you want something quite moisturizing if you're however like you have a combination oily or combination dry or just like in between like you're not oily you're not dry then use something that don't, kind of does like a mattifying and moisturizing kind of thing something that's a bit in between like something like a velvet finish don't mind the dog <laughs> I do recommend though before any re like makeup routine, especially if you're going to be wearing it for a long period of time, to exfoliate and moisturize. To get rid of any dead skin cells on your face that the like foundation may peel, like cling to, if there's any dry patches. However, I'm going to go in with my 100% pure mattifying primer with vitamins and antioxidants. This one doesn't have silicon. Another thing that's going like, to cause your foundation to fade throughout the, throughout the day is having something like with silicon in it, you know, something that's like smooths out the pores. Even though it does create a really flawless finish to the skin, like you have really airbrushed skin, it just causes your foundation to fade and wear away because it's not really like allowing it to stick to the skin. It's kind of got like a mask over the skin, so it's not really anything to grip to. So if you are using something silicon based, just keep that in mind. I just recommend not using something with silicon in it. Use something else. <laughs> So I just put that um, primer all over my face as like a base to help mattify it. Next I'm going to take an eyeshadow primer and I'm going to apply it to the places on my face where I can tend to get the fading, where my makeup can fade or cling to anything. This is just going to help like create an extra barrier of like defense against that fading and because this eyeshadow primer, this MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, is like a mattifying finish. It's going to help like last longer, help your makeup to last longer, help have something for that foundation to cling to. It's also tinted so it's going to stop any redness poking through or anything like that. And I'm literally just applying it to any of the places that I do get fading. And the trick is to apply like a minute amount, like a tiny, tiny amount. Less than what you'd apply to your eyes, to your eyelids. Because if you apply too much, it's going to just kind of do the opposite. It's going to cake up. It's not going to create a nice adhesive base. It's just going to be too much product sitting on the skin. And strangely enough, I always get fading like here. Always, always, always. So I'm going to apply some here. And I get it on my chin as well. So yeah, I'm going to put it here too. As you can see, it's not supposed to be like something that's covering up our imperfections. This is just going to be priming the skin. It's just helping create a matte finish so that the foundation can stick to something. So next I'm going to actually apply a very light layer of powder over my face to help lock in that product, set it, and also to help control the oils. That's the extra barrier for my oils during the day. It's going to kind of soak up those oils before it gets to my foundation kind of thing but I know like there's a rig rule of makeup that you don't apply powder before like your liquids I'm only going to be applying a smidgen like a tiny smidge everywhere over my face just to, like I said set it in place create a barrier for my oils so I'm using my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder so I'm just literally doing a light AF dusting. <laughs> you definitely don't want to apply too much on this step because it will cake up, guys. So I really like to accentuate the fact that I'm doing a light layer. <laughs> so then I applied some Urban Decay All Night Setting Spray to lock all that powder and all that priming in place so that it's going to create a nice long lasting base. Next, I'm going to apply some foundation and I'm actually going to take my Matte and Poreless in the shade Creamy Beige and mix it with my Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 foundation. So the reason I'm applying two foundations is because the Matte and Poreless one will last all day. It keeps me matte. It won't 
fade or go patchy, especially with the base that we've applied. The Milani one is the right colour for me and it creates a nice full coverage effect. I like the finish it has as well, like it does it, it's not too matte, like matte and poreless one is perfect because it keeps me, it keeps me matte all day, especially with the base that we applied. Um, it's just the wrong shade for me, it's creamy beige and I need medium, at least medium beige, if not a bit darker at the moment. So mixing those two together is going to create a, like a matte base, but it's also not going to be extremely matte. I still, I still like a smidgen of a bit, like a bit of velvet finish to the skin. Because it looks more realistic rather than just being, you know, completely flat. <laughs> and you want to make sure you're really doing like a, like a light layer of foundation. You don't want to cake on heaps and heaps of product. I know I had the habit of doing that when I had acne. I'd cake on like a lot of product just to cover it up. So that's why you should go with like full coverage foundations. Like there's a Giorgio Armani one. Um, the Matte and Paulus one's really full coverage. Even the Milani one is really, really full coverage as well. So you don't need to use as much product. Because if you cake on the product and try and work it into the skin, like if you're quick, if you're in a rush and you're not actually properly blending it into the skin, it's not going to properly adhe adhere to the skin. There's going to be lots of product just sitting there. It's going to fade, it's going to transfer. It's just going to be a bit of a hot mess, really. So it's important to just apply a little bit of product at a time. And I like to use the beauty sponge because it um, soaks up any excess rather than like a brush. It wouldn't soak up as much and things like that. So if I am heavy, heavy handed, um, you know, I've got my little safety net here. <laughs> okay, so once you've properly blended in your foundation, make sure you properly blend it in. Don't just do the quick little dab, dab, dab out the door. I know when you're in, the, in the morning can be a bit of a rush, but it is important if you want long wearing foundation to properly help it melt into the skin. So I'm going to move on with concealer. I, with concealer, I don't really recommend like the emulsifying concealers, like the ones that you get in little pots that you need to warm up with your finger and apply. Because those ones won't last as long. The heat from your skin is going to disturb it. It's just going to. It's not going to last as long as a concealer, like a liquid concealer. The matte Pro Longwear ones are good. Anything that dries to like a matte finish is good. I'm sure the Tarte Shape Tape ones really good. It's quite full coverage as well. I'm going to use my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer because I find personally this personally this one lasts really well. And to help it like last even longer, I'm going to apply. The concealer to the places that I tend to get, you know, the fading, the patchiness, the like wearing awayness, I guess. So I'm gonna apply it under the eyes, on the nose, um, around the nose, where I can get like hormonal redness as well, chin and forehead. And I'm using a beauty sponge on the skin areas to help it melt into the skin, really push it in, help it blend and really last as long as possible and when I get to my eyes I'm going to use like a brush because I just find it works the best around my eye area so like I said I'm just going to use the brush to blend this product around my eyes so before I powder I'm just going to set the face again I know we set it before we applied like the base on top but I'm going to set it again to really lock everything in place I swear this is what I do when I really want my makeup to last forever is I just apply like I apply so much setting spray like with each layer just to lock it in next layer lock it in you know what I mean it's just like it's gonna help adhere everything to the skin help it melt and become one okay, so next I'm again going to grab some of that Laura Mercier translucent powder and on a damp beauty sponge I'm going to press this into the skin where I apply that concealer and also anywhere that I get the fading or the patchiness or anything like that just to help lock it in to my skin it's gonna really just like absolutely adhere it to the skin you know however guys to lock the lids in place you guys know my absolutely favorite technique is to grab some pressed powder this is the Eclipse pressed powder and I just swirl my dry beauty sponge in and I just go to town like absolutely bake this baby in place so this is my favorite method to lock it in and it's foolproof it's absolutely foolproof it will last all day 
And again, we're going to set this base in place with our setting spray. And yeah. So this is our long lasting base. Okay guys, so when I want my brows to like last as long as possible, I actually like go in with some brow gel. Today I'm going to use my Ardell, um, not Ardell, sorry, my Rimmel Brow This Way Brow Sculpting Gel. And I'll actually comb my brows like up with it, like help it stay in place help it last as long as possible and I'll go back in like after I've filled them in and re like push them in but I just feel like this extra I know like coating at the beginning helps them last longer like the brows will stay in place longer so while that's sitting in place I'm going to take my miscellane Barbados Babe Bronzer. I'm kind of just like sculpting the face out as well as warming it up because I don't think I'll contour today. If you guys like a more um, contoured kind of bronze to the skin, then I would take a shade that's like not too warm, not too cool. Something like in between where you can kind of bronze and contour at the same time because it'll save you time. You won't have to be dipping into the two shadows to like, you know, get the same effect. And I always like to bring it down on the body as well. Always, always, always. Especially if I'm wearing a shirt like this, where you can see the decollete And you're like, oof. And, you know, those shoulders are looking pretty pasty and the rest of you is looking pretty bronzed. So I just bring some there. And I also like to actually kind of, I know it's I'm contouring with a bronzer, but... And I just kind of bronze it out. Like I kind of buff it out with some more bronzer. So it looks like I've been kind of sun kissed on the nose kind of thing. So it's not so structured. It's a bit more soft. So with my brows, now that they're set, I'm going to grab my Shady Slim Brow Pencil from LA Girl. And I actually just keep it super simple because I'm so blessed where I have quite full brows. I'm very, very thankful for that. So I really just kind of sculpt out the bottom of it and it, I'm just going to leave this clip in so you can, guys can just see how fast I actually fill my brows in like I'll just kind of sculpt the bottom out give a bit of um, shading to the front of the brow just a little bit and I just go through all the way to the tail and just create a nice kind of um, sculpt to the brow I extend it out just slightly just slightly like that and then if there's any sparse areas I'll literally just fill those in slightly nothing too crazy and I also just like to kind of kind of sculpt the tail out just slightly like that as well and that's it then I'll just do a little bit of little feathered strokes upwards to fill in any sparse areas like that and that's all I do to the brows and then I go back in with this tinted brow gel you guys can use a clear one as well like I'm just using this one and that's all I do to the brows it's so easy so for the eyes, I just keep it so simple, so simple. So I just use whatever bronze I've used that, you know, the day that I've bronzed. <laughs> and I apply this literally just in the crease. This is totally turned into like an everyday makeup look as well. <laughs> it was unintentional, but that's what it is. I might even do like a realistic um, everyday makeup look where I actually show you what I wear every day like just to make the skin like little just tiny little things to make the skin look a bit more flawless very minimal it'll literally take two minutes to do like sometimes I'll wear it to work lifeguarding if I feel like I look a bit drab and I just feel like I need a bit of a pick me up I might even do a tutorial on that let me know guys if you want me to do that and I just go in with my mascara you guys can totally leave it with just mascara I mean that's pretty much like an everyday look just mascara it up and head out the door this mascara is fantastic to really volumize separate 
and coat those lashes. Girl, I love these lashes. So I went in with the Bambi lashes from House of Lashes and they're just super wispy. They're like very natural, I feel like, lashes. They're very extravagant, I won't, I won't deny that. Like they, they're like glam natural lashes, I would say. That's the best way to describe them. <laughs> so next I'm gonna move on to the highlight, my favorite part, my favorite part of any look. So I'm going to take my Violet Voss Highlighting Trio and I'm going to first of all pick up both Moon Gleam and Star Glow and apply that to like the high points of my cheekbone. I mean like we can't forget our glow. Cannot step out of the house without a glow. And then I'm just going to take the lighter shade Moon Gleam and apply that to my nose. Of course, like Cupid's bow. I don't particularly like to highlight like the chin or anywhere on the forehead because if I do have my natural oil seeping through like for long day wear, I'll do it for like a glam look like if it's not like for hours and hours and hours I'll be wearing the makeup. But like if I'm going to be wearing this makeup for like a long period of time, I'll only just apply it to like cheekbones, nose and cupid's bow. And I'm going to grab some of Moon Gleam, which is the lightest shade as well, and apply that to the very inner corners and I'll just apply it to the very high point of my brow bone to give a bit of attention there. Oh, I just love brow bone highlights. And because like I said before, I like to bring whatever I've done on the face to the body, especially with like an open shirt like this. Oh, oh I really like that. And I just apply that on for a bit of a glow a bit of a body glow and then to finish up the skin I'm going to spritz my face with my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to lock all of this in place for the day it's good because it won't add any more coverage if I like the setting sprays they don't add any coverage to the skin they just help lock it all down so I'm quickly just going to do my hair really quickly and come back and do the lips but I just want to kind of get this just in it under control so I'll be right back. Um, back. I just did my hair like in like you know, a little casual like ponytail and chucked on the hat because I'm about to head out the door, honey. So let's do um, lips, shall we? By the way, I forgot to mention before. I don't usually put bottom lash mascara on my bottom lashes. I like to just leave it with the really extravagant top lashes like I usually do the top lid and leave the bottom just kind of plain because I feel like it just opens up the eyes more for me personally you guys can totally put bottom lash mascara on if you would like hun it's all up to you so I have like a stack of like lip options here <laughs> I have no idea what lip combo I want to do I just know that I want to do like a nude pink that's what I don't want to do today and can't done so I'm actually going to line my lips I know I never ever line my lips but I'm going in with this natural shade from Rimmel I think it's 049 or 040 I'll leave it linked down below anyways along with all the other products of course and I'm gonna slightly overline my lips slightly because this is a glam look and I want fuller lips bed so I kind of just like soften the edges when I do it so when I overline them it looks actually more natural than having a harsh line just there and I found that technique really helps make it look more like you've actually got fuller lips rather than just you've overlined and I also just go and fill it in as well so this is like the swatches of all the lipsticks and I'm thinking I want like more of this kind of tone like the pinkies like that one's a bit too light that's LA from Kylie Cosmetics I think that one's a bit too light so I think I might stick I might go with like do I want a pale plethora? I don't know no, I'm tossing between pink oh pink nude and pale plethora I think I might go pale plethora because I kind of like the liquid lipstick finish for like a long day wear. Like I don't have to fix it up as much. I'm taking... Oh yeah, that's actually really pretty. I like that. I'm taking pale plethora from Zoeva. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, tutorial. Maybe we got a little thing or two out of it. So as always, there'll be a full list of products down below for you guys to check out if you want to, you know, purchase anything or anything like that. If you guys are curious on how I've cleared up my skin, I'll make sure to leave the videos linked down below for you guys to check out if you would like. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have an awesome day and I'll see you soon. Mwah. Bye!